Hello, Dr. Kelly here, and today I'm going to be talking about population variance. The purpose of the population variance is to give us an idea of how much variability exists in a population. So let's say I was looking at my behavioral statistics students, and they all agreed, and I measured the height of each student in my class, and I charted it on a histogram. And let's say that that histogram looks something like this. Where we would see quite a lot of spread in terms of the height of the students. This will give you an idea that there is a fair amount of variability in the height of, of each of the students. Alternatively, I might have recorded every single student's height and found something that looks more like this where it's a little bit closer together or perhaps more extreme I might have measured all the behavioral statistics students heights and I might have found that they were closely clumped. So in looking at these histograms we see one where it has a lot of spread a large amount of variability, a medium amount of spread or all the scores are close together. That is if we were to draw the, the mean we'd see that most of the scores are very close to the mean where there's a small amount of variability and they're fairly spread out where there's a large amount of variability. Okay, so coming back to the population variability. So <clears throat> here we're looking at histograms, pictures to convey it, but the population variability conveys that as a single number. So if the number is small, that's saying that there's a small amount of variability, and if the number is large, it's saying that there's a large amount of variability. So how do we calculate then this population variance, this number that helps to convey the same idea um, that you might get by looking at one of these uh, graphs? To calculate the population variance, we take each value in our data set, we subtract from it the mean, that's called a different score, value minus the mean, we square it, then we add up all those squared different scores, and then we divide by the size of our data set. That is the number of uh, values in the data set. Here there are the written directions. So again, number step one, calculate the mean. Step two, calculate each different score. Step three, square each different score. Step four, add up the squared different scores. And step five, divide by the size of the data set. Let's say our data set is a 5, a 14, a 22, and a 31. So the size of the data set is 4. There's 4 values here. And we're asked to calculate the population variance as a way to get an idea of how much spread, how much variability uh, there exists in these 4 uh, values here. So to calculate the population variance, step 1 is to calculate the mean. To determine the mean, we add up, that's what this symbol is, it's an uppercase sigma, means add them all up. We add up all the values, the 5, 14, 22, and 31, and we divide by a size, in this case, 4. So we add up our four values, 5 plus 14 plus 22 plus 31, and we divide it by 4. That comes out to be 72 over 4, or a mean of 18. So the mean for our data set is 18. All right, step two, calculate each different score. So a difference score is just, what's the difference between the value and the mean? <clears throat> so the further, uh, the more variability that exists within a distribution, the bigger the difference scores. If all the scores are close to the mean, our difference scores will be small. If the difference scores are big, that says, hey, there's a lot of variability in the uh, distribution. So step two says, hey, calculate the difference score for each of these values. Here's a table that makes it easy to follow through these uh, steps for calculating the population variance. So I've listed the four values, and then for the difference score, value minus the mean, it's value minus the mean of 18. So 5 minus 18 is a negative 13. 14 minus 18 is a negative 4. 22 minus 18 is a positive 4. And 31 minus 18 is a positive 13. And one of the things that you may notice is that these different scores, if you take the um, average of them, if you add them all up, uh, they add up to zero, and zero divided by four is zero. These different scores are always going to add up to zero. Now here it looks beautifully symmetrical. A negative 13 and a positive 13, a negative 4 and a positive 4. It doesn't always work out that symmetrical, but 
when the day is done, you've added up all the negative numbers and all the positive numbers, it always goes to zero. And the reason why is your mean is right there in the middle of the um, of the distribution. Uh, uh, and that, think of a seesaw, the, the mean would be like the balancing point on a seesaw. And so you've selected and calculated the mean what values in the exact middle of all those different uh, values and so if you subtract from the mean the values smaller than the mean those will be negative and if you uh, subtract um, the mean from the values that are larger those will all be positive and when you sum them all up uh, it will be uh, zero and in fact that's the reason why we have this step three which is square each of the different scores because when we square each of these different scores uh, we'll then have all positive numbers, right? If we have negative 5 and we square it, uh, we'll get uh, negative 5 times negative 5, a positive 25. Or if we add a negative 7 and we square it, we'll get a positive 49. So by squaring our different scores, all the values will be positive. And that's the way that uh, we can get around this fact that the different scores, as wonderful as they are, if we add them all up, they'd always go to 0. Okay, so for step 3, square each different score. Negative 13 squared is 169, negative 4 squared is 16, positive 4 squared is 16, and positive 13 squared is 169. Now on to step 4, add up the squared difference scores. So we add 169 plus 16 plus 16 plus 169, and that equals 370. And then step 5, divide by the size of the data set. And we have four values in our data set, so it's going to be the whole sum divided by 4, or 370 divided by 4, and that comes out to be 92.5. So for our data set, the mean is 18. That's our measure of central tendency, the, the idea to give you what's typical for this data set. And our variance is 92.5, and that gives you an idea of how much variability there is. Later on, you may learn about the standard deviation. And you notice that since we squared each of the values, it got very large. With the standard deviation, you take the square root of the population variance, and that brings things back down to size. So again, if you're going to calculate the standard deviation, simply take the square root of the variance. Our variance was 92.5, so the square root would be a, sorry, the standard deviation would be the square root of 92.5, and that comes out to be 9.62. All right, so for those interested in standard deviation, a little extra step. I will give it uh, to you, and it will be in the same unit of measurement as your original values. All right, take care.